We've all seen these types of lists over the years, and while some things are generally agreed upon, there are some unique items that are specific to the person. That said, I figured I'd weigh in on the subject and give my top 10 must-have supplies for new and experienced haunters alike. The first one's pretty common, but I just can't stress how useful they are and how many of them I use annually. It's chip brushes. While they won't give you the best finish, they're extremely versatile and can be a huge time saver since they're single use and don't get washed out. They're great for paints of any kind and wood stains, plus they bring a certain texture to your finish that can help your painted surfaces look a bit more aged with minimal effort. Need an angled brush or maybe a more stiff brush? Grab some scissors and cut the shape you need without feeling guilty about ruining another brush. And when you're done, toss them. Next on my list are razor blades. I'm specifically talking about the loose utility knife blades. Having a blade with a handle is definitely the safest approach to handling razors, but sometimes you need to scrape a surface or get into a space where a handle just won't fit, and that's where the loose blades come into play. Additionally, I use them a ton for foam work since they're great for creating the look of cracked stone. And of course they're good for cutting things too, like stencils and masking tape. At number three is the one tool I can't make a tombstone without, and that's a rasp. I like a small handheld model, but there's a variety of styles and they're all great for shaping foam with minimal effort. They make adding organic shapes to any foam project really easy and are a must if you do any kind of foam sculpting. This next item hasn't been on any lists I've seen, but once I realized just how useful it was I knew it had to make mine, and that's a pull saw. For the uninitiated, a pull saw works opposite of a standard saw that cuts when you push it. This cuts as you pull, which allows for a bit more control. The other benefit is that the blade is very thin and removes minimal material while remaining flexible enough to cut more organic shapes. They come in a variety of sizes, often with two different tooth patterns, and are great for wood and PVC and is an absolute must for cutting foam. Next on the list is something I've talked about in other videos, so it should come as no surprise that it's on this list, and that's the Critter Spray Gun. We've all had to paint something with tight curves or recesses and have thought there's got to be a faster way or you've opted for using spray paint, which can add up in a hurry. The Critter is the most straightforward spray gun I've ever used and makes painting any surface less time consuming. It has minimal parts to troubleshoot if you have issues and clean up as fast. Plus it comes with its own paint storage jar. Craft sticks might be one of the most used items that made this list. They're great for mixing paints, stirring silicones or resins, and applying glues, but they're also great for aligning foam while the glue dries, spreading out joint compound or with a sharpened end, using them to create textures in foam. I like to keep a variety of sizes around and use them so often that I keep them in a place where I can find them quickly. If you've watched any of my videos, you know that I use spray bottles all the time. They're great for paint washes and effect finishes, but also for cleaning out your airbrush or cleaning up after paint spills. Don't ask. The only caveat is that they have to be the kind with a filter if you're using them for weathering, since paint can sometimes clog them up. I like to keep at least two on hand, one for paint and one for water, just in case the paint goes on too heavy and needs to be watered down after it's been sprayed. This next one goes hand in hand with the spray bottles and the paint gun. It's mesh paint strainers. We've all experienced clumps in our paints and anytime you want to spray them you're likely to have a clog as a result. A mesh strainer will minimize that problem, keeping your project moving along without the frequent stops to clean out your nozzle. You can buy them in packs, so they end up being an inexpensive tool that saves you time in the long run. With two left, I figured I'd throw in a couple of curveballs, starting with gaffer's tape. If you've ever needed to secure wires to the floor, or hold a lighting gel in place, or tape something to the wall without removing the paint when you're done, then you need gaffer's tape. It's similar to duct tape, but withstands higher temperatures, is more durable, and doesn't leave behind any residue. They also come in a variety of colors, but let's be honest, you only need matte black. To round out the list is something I never knew I needed until Mrs. Van Oaks bought one for me, and that's an LED headlamp. We've all been rushing to finish our displays or troubleshooting props in the dark using our mouths to hold a flashlight, right? A headlamp will free up both hands and makes addressing any of these last minute issues a breeze because there's always a light where you point your head. If you don't have one, you should really get one. Well that's going to do it for my list. How many of them were on yours? Leave me a comment below and tell me the things that I've missed. And be sure to subscribe for more videos, and as always, go make something.